Welcome once again to Lato's Law. Here's Steve Lato. Daryl sent me a note about this story, and I'd seen it in the news, but interestingly, there's a couple topics I want to talk about, one of which is uh, not related directly to this exact vehicle, but has to do with the term that uh, a lot of car guys and gals will recognize. And I know this is a bit of debate now on how you say it. So we'll get there in a second, but first from atlantanewsfirst.com. Ford vehicles recalled, but replacement parts aren't available for months. So you get the notice saying your vehicle's being recalled. Uh, it's, it's a serious issue. We'll fix it for free next year. Yeah, what about now? Uh, well, that's, that's a problem. See, Ford Motor Company issued the recall. Parts will not be available on this one until early 2025. Owners responded with a class action lawsuit, which, as you and I both know, won't solve the problem and also won't necessarily compensate anybody who's gotten these vehicles for the amount of damages they're suffering. So Harry Samuel wrote this, and Ford Motor Company's recall of the 2016 to 2022 Ford EcoSport and Focus vehicles with the one-liter engines has put owners in a difficult position. Their cars have defective parts that could potentially ruin the engine, but the replacement parts will not be available for at least six months, which is, of course, next year. And a one-liter engine? <laughs> I think I may have had a mini bike with a one-liter engine. Uh, one liter. One liter. Um, it's almost like a Cox 049, <laughs> according to the recall. The oil drive belt tensioner arm may fracture or separate, causing a loss of vehicle power and power braking assist, increasing the risk of a crash. And remember that if you have a defect that is safety-related, it becomes a matter of a recall for NHTSA. NHTSA says you can't have vehicles out there with known safety defects. So this wouldn't even matter if you have the vehicle and it has this problem, but it doesn't qualify as a lemon. So in other words, if you're in a state where the problem's got to occur within the first year, uh, if this happened in the first year, very well could be a lemon, uh, depending on how quickly they could fix it or not. However, uh, outside of lemon hood or lemonness, uh, it doesn't matter. It's a safety-related issue. Several plaintiffs filed a class action lawsuit in June of last year, alleging the defect presents a serious safety hazard because it can cause catastrophic engine failure without warning while driving, lost motive power, and or sudden limp mode activation, increasing the likelihood of an accident. Moreover, because Ford is aware that the failures occur frequently just outside of warranty, it is unfairly transferring the cost of the warranty repairs to unsuspecting consumers of the vehicles in which these engines are equipped. And by the way, this is a failure you would notice. It's not something you might, you might not notice if it happened. So there's one woman that the TV station found who's been dealing with the consequences of this for three months. She was on her way to work when the 2019 Ford EcoSport that she owns uh, dashboard lit up like a Christmas tree. It's slowing down ever so slowly and slowly and slowly. My engine light pops on, but no, the oil light pops up. So I'm thinking a problem with the oil. Five-star Ford of Stone Mountain confirmed that the parts listed in the recall had failed in this case. So it's not their fault. They're like, hey, if we had the parts, we could fix this. We don't. Then came the bad news. The replacement parts weren't available until next year. She said Ford Motor Company service rep advised her to ask the dealership for a loaner car, but the dealership said they could not offer one because they don't give out loaner cars when they don't know how long it will take. They're not going to give you a loaner car for six months. Dealership's like, hey, that's not our job. Again, it's not their problem either. This is a problem with the manufacturer. So the woman was then forced to rely on friends, coworkers, ride-sharing, and rental cars. She said she's out about two grand so far and says the worst part is not being able to get to her mother, who lives 300 miles away in South Carolina. And she's 88 years old, the woman says. She's in full-on dementia, progressing. It's where my fear lies, not being able to get to her in a timely manner. She depends on me for everything, even though I'm in Georgia four hours away. So making matters worse, she can't afford to sell the car or trade it in because of its depreciated value as a non-running vehicle. You're trying to sell a boat anchor at this point, and a small boat anchor at that. However, she is still required to make her monthly car payments and maintain insurance on it. Ford Motor Company did not immediately respond to Atlanta News First Investigates. However, 
The woman says on the day of the inquiry, she received a call from a Ford rep to ask us anything the company could do. So once again, the media gets involved, starts poking around, and suddenly the manufacturer wakes up and they're like, oh, ma'am, can we help you? Now, here's the problem. They're helping her because a TV station apparently started asking questions. What about all the other people? What about them? So the dealership confirmed that Ford Motor Company had authorized a replacement engine. Turns out that they've apparently got replacement engines laying around. They just haven't got that part. So your vehicle's unsafe to drive. You need to park it between now and next year. Uh, and we could replace the whole engine. However, we'd rather replace the one part we haven't got. That's the rationale. Since then, the dealership provided a loaner car because they knew how long it would take to replace the engine. They replaced the engine and they returned the car three weeks later. Ford has since updated the recall on its website to include replacement engines as an alternative. So if your vehicle has this problem, apparently, Ford is now saying that if we haven't got the part, we've got an engine. There you go. Ford Motor Company says it updated its recall recently, and they say they did that before they got the phone call from the TV station, but we'll see about that. <laughs> to make the engine replacement alternative available, it is now that way. So they say, if the engine in your vehicle fails due to a damaged oil pump belt and or oil pump belt tensioner, Ford has authorized your dealer to replace the engine assembly as an interim repair before the availability of remedy parts for the final repair. This repair will be free of charge, and that's parts and labor. Ford Motor Company also requested the woman's receipts, the woman from the story, uh, for ride shares and rentals, and they are saying that they're going to reimburse her for those. So they stepped up on that, and they say now they got this taken care of. But I've heard of stories like this happening, where a manufacturer says, we found a problem, we're going to do a recall, we're going to fix it, and, uh, but the parts aren't here yet. And it's like, we won't have the parts. Now, one interesting point here is that they had the engines, but not the extra parts. And some people would say, well, wait a second. They got all these engines stacked up. They have the parts. They're just on engines. Um, there are some situations where you could pull the parts off those engines, but it might just make more sense to put the whole engine in. Uh, and at this point, I'm sure some CPAs sat around and crunched some numbers. So I thought to myself... How much horsepower can a one-liter engine have? Now, I'm not talking about, I understand if you, you know, hired some race car engine manufacturer and said, how much horsepower can you get out of one liter? I understand they can get all kinds of horsepower out by supercharging and doing all kinds of crazy stuff. But I looked this up, and the 1.0 liter EcoBoost four-cylinder engine, <laughs> I just laugh because a four-cylinder one-liter engine Obviously, each cylinder is, I don't know, roughly a quarter of a liter. Is that 15, 16 cubic inches? The four-cylinder engine generates 123 horsepower and 125 pound-feet of torque. And um, that's pretty darn impressive for such a small engine. Uh, but I, the question I asked at the top, and I said I want to address this with the car folk in the audience is that when I was growing up, we called it foot-pounds, torque. We called it foot-pounds, 625 foot-pounds. And, of course, it's not 625 feet per pound. It's actually 625 pound per foot. So pound-feet actually technically, I believe, makes more sense. But we grew up saying foot-pounds. I remember using the old torque wrenches with a big old handle and the needle and the, and the gauge. I, I remember that, Okay. And we always say foot pounds, foot pounds, foot pounds. And I'm wondering, did it say pound feet all along and we just kept saying foot pounds? Or did they actually switch it? Because I know that I've heard people say, well, yeah, it's an American thing to say foot pounds. And it's a, a, a European and elsewhere thing to say pound feet. But I noticed that in TV commercials, uh, more recently, even in American ones, they'll say uh, pound foot or pound feet, depending on how you want to do that. So the question I have for you, especially if you're my age or around there uh, and you're a car guy and ever dug through a Motors or a Chilton's looking up torque specs, uh, did you always think it was pound feet or foot pounds? That's the question. But yeah, cranking, cranking 123 horsepower out of a single liter <laughs> is pretty impressive. 
Now, I, I'm just laughing because I've got a Viper, which is uh, an 8-liter engine, and each piston is 48 cubic inches. Um, but that's, that's a whole different thing. And so one of the things that Ford obviously has done with the EcoBoost is they created an engine that is uh, really efficient um, and puts out a lot of power for how small it is. And, of course, it also doesn't uh, you know, burn up as much gas uh, as a larger engine might, especially when it's not doing anything. It requires all that power of 123 horsepower. So I spoke at a book event eight or nine years ago in Ann Arbor on a panel with a bunch of other car authors. And on the panel with me was Bob Lutz. I kid you not. And somebody asked Bob Lutz about the future of American car manufacturing. He's talking about engines and making them efficient. And he was joking about how much stuff you can hang off an engine <laughs> to get more power out of it. And he actually gave the EcoBoost as an example. And he said, yeah, they get all kinds of horsepower, these tiny little engines. But then, of course, you're asking them to do all kinds of other stuff. And one of the problems is that you're jamming so much stuff in a small space. And the question is, where do you put the water pump? Where do you put the oil pump? Where do you put the oil pump belt tensioner? <laughs> and how hard is it to get to? So, Daryl, thanks for sending that from Atlanta News first. Dot com. Harry Samuel wrote that Ford vehicles recalled but replacement parts aren't available for months next year. But you could get yourself a new engine. Questions, comments, put them below. Let's talk to you later. Bye bye. Thank you for watching Lato's Law. It's what we do right now that makes a difference.